Hey folks, welcome back to our third day of notes on plate tectonics. Remember, this stuff is the stuff that's going to be on the test, so it's very important that you do your notes on time. If you're not doing your notes on time, you're not going to be prepared for the test or uh, the next day's labs or activities. Okay, so today's unit, once again, plate tectonics, topic, plate boundaries and plate features here. Day three of four. Today you're going to understand the theory of plate tectonics, and you will also understand the three different types of plate boundaries and the different geologic features found at these plate boundaries. Many of the features we're familiar with around the world, volcanoes, deep sea trenches, okay, all of these things form at plate boundaries. So plate tectonics uh, creates mountains, volcanoes. Without it, our world would be flat. All right, so um, answer one of these questions below in one to two sentences, please. Do earthquakes occur in random areas or do they occur in specific areas? Why do you think we receive earthquakes and volcanoes here in California? Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. You're quick write for five points. I'm going to move on. All right, so plate tectonics. By 1968, okay, scientists had come together to develop a new theory that combined the main ideas of both continental drift and seafloor spreading. Okay, these two theories had scientists scratching their heads science textbooks had to be rewritten for a new theory, the theory of plate tectonics, which states that the Earth's crust is broken up into sections or plates that slowly move. So these yellow lines on this diagram here show where these plates meet, these plate boundaries. Okay. So when you look, scientists started plotting the location of earthquakes around the world. As they did this, a pattern began to emerge that showed the cracks in the Earth's crust, revealing plate boundary locations. Okay, so once they started plotting earthquakes, it became apparent where these plates meet, or we call them plate boundaries. So scientists plotted earthquakes all over the world, and what they realized was that earthquakes happen in certain locations, not randomly, and they occur where these two plates meet. Okay. Next, scientists began plotting the location of volcanoes around the world. Okay. Once again, a pattern emerged, or started to show itself, and they realized that many of the world's volcanoes, once again, happen in the same regions as earthquakes. And they realized that volcanoes happen at plate boundaries, where plates meet. Okay. So, <clears throat> notice the pattern here? Most earthquakes don't happen in random locations. They happen at plate boundaries. So what is the theory of plate tectonics? Okay. That is the question for your notes. That goes in the question section. What is the theory of plate tectonics? The answer goes in the answer section. Okay, use the answer bank to determine which words best complete the sentence. Write that both in your notes and in the answer bank section. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay, so plate tectonics. Plates are composed of the Earth's crust and the upper mantle. We call this the lithosphere, if you remember. Okay, well... Continental crust is thicker and lighter because it is made of a rock called granite. Granite here is what the continents are made of mostly. Okay, so we have continental crust made up of granite and it has a, lot, a lower density so it floats. And then we have ocean crust. It is thinner and heavier or more dense because it is made of basalt, a dark, heavier rock right here and it's thinner. Think of it like your pizza, right? This is your crust of your pizza, it's thicker, okay? Less dense, has those air bubbles. And then we get the thin part right over here, their pizza, right, with all the toppings on it. That's ocean crust. Okay, so what are the plates made of? For your notes, the lithosphere, the blank and upper mantle, continental crust is thicker, less dense, lighter, and made of granite. Okay, ocean crust is thinner and more dense, heavier, made of basalt. So draw this picture, please. Remember to write the question in your answer in your question section, the answer in the answer section, and use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay, the three plate boundaries. Well, plates move in three basic directions. Okay, so divergent plates are pulling apart. Remember seafloor spreading? Well, 
plates were spreading apart. Well, now we call this with the theory of plate tectonics divergent plate boundaries. Plates spread apart where magma rises and new ocean crust or crust is created. Convergent plates where plates collide. Notice they collide, but one subducts and goes underneath the other here. And then we have transform where they kind of slide or move past each one another. Okay. Notice they're not spreading apart here or okay, colliding. They're sliding past one another. So after the theory of plate tectonics, seafloor spreading had a new name, divergent plate boundary. Let's look at divergent plate boundary here. Okay. At a divergent plate boundary, like in the mid-Atlantic here, plates are spreading apart. Okay. And if we take a cross-section of this, you can see right here we have this ocean ridge. Okay. As the plates spread apart, new new rock or seafloor is created. Okay. Features found at divergent plate boundaries include rift valleys. So this little crack down in the middle here is actually a little rift valley. And this big mountain range is called an ocean ridge. Okay. And the most famous example is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Okay. So another example of a divergent plate boundary is the East African Rift Zone. Okay, let's look at East Africa here. What is going on with East Africa? Well, East Africa is getting pulled apart. Okay. The plates are pulling apart here. And if we take a slice through Earth, you can see this is the East African Rift Valley. The floor is sinking here. Okay, and the two plates, the Somali plate and the African plate are pulling apart. And magma is coming up. Okay. So a large rift valley here. If you look at this map here, look at the volcanoes. You can see East Africa, volcanoes once again. That's one way you know there's a plate boundary. There's volcanoes and earthquakes happen here. And notice as this plate gets pulled apart, lakes are starting to fill in, water is starting to fill in. Okay. And if we speed up time, eventually, millions of years from now, East Africa is going to be ripped away from the rest of the continent. Okay. All right. Convergent plate boundaries where the biggest earthquakes occur in the biggest mountains. All right. Well, let's look at convergent plate boundaries, remember, are where two plates collide. Let's look at this section right here. Okay, if we look at that, if we take a slice through Earth, what's happening there? This plate is going down beneath the South American plate. The Nazca plate is being pushed underneath the South American plate. Okay, at convergent plate boundaries, ocean crust is heavier, more dense, and therefore is forced underneath thicker, lighter continental crust. Okay, continental crust floats higher. It's less dense. This ocean crust is heavier, so it sinks. Okay? The process where one plate is forced underneath another plate is called subduction, and a subduction zone is formed. Okay? Subduction results in the formation of, look at, deep sea trenches here. And above a subduction zone, we get volcanoes, volcanic mountains, because one plate, as it forced underneath the other plate, Okay, it gets really hot here, friction, and as it goes back into the earth, it generally gets, it's a hotter area, so it melts, and like a lava lamp, lamp that hot magma rises to the surface, where we form volcanoes over millions of years, okay? So, what is a subduction zone? For your notes, question in the left-hand side, answer in the right-hand side, use the answer bank to determine which words best complete the sentence. If you want, go ahead and draw this, it's kind of a hard picture to draw, but don't worry about it. Here we go. Go ahead and pause this while you write. Okay, the last type today is a transform boundary. Well, we're bringing it home here to California. The San Andreas transform boundary here in California is an example, is a perfect example of a transform plate boundary. Okay, here the plates are moving past one another, like sliding two books past one another, right? Well, here we don't get volcanic mountains like we do at Convergent or deep sea trenches, but we do get Okay, a lot of earthquakes and some small mountains. Mountains build along these plate boundaries too, okay, as you know. So here, this is in Southern California. We have the North American plate on this side and the Pacific plate on this side. And they're sliding past one another. Notice we get these small mountains and we get earthquakes all over this region. Okay, So that is the California San Andreas Transform Fault. Okay. All right, so let's kind of review real quick. Divergent, okay, plates spread apart, right? Earthquakes, volcanoes. So we'll go to convergent now. 
Okay. One plate is pushed underneath the other, and you get subduction here in volcanoes. And if we go to transform, okay, right, you get mountains and earthquakes. These little mountains here. Okay. And then let's bring it all together. Let's take a huge slice through Earth. Okay. And what's happening here? New ocean ridge. Okay. Divergent, convergent, melting here. Deep sea trench. Okay, so we can see a couple of plate boundaries here. We see a transform, they're sliding past one another here. We see divergent and then convergent where the subduction zone is happening in volcanic mountains. Okay. So for your notes, last one for today, it's a lot. You're like, whoa, that's a huge. This is the question. This goes in the question section. What are the three types of plate boundary? This table is very, very important. It, sub it summarizes a lot of important data we just covered. So draw this table in the answer section, okay? Fill this out. Very, very, very important. It has examples, features, and plate directions, okay? And here's the name of the plate boundary, okay? Use the answer bank again to help you out. Okay, very important. Last one for today. Write this whole table down in your answer section. Go ahead and pause this. I'm going to move on. Okay, so since that was a long summarize here, since that was a long one to write, I'm just going to have you do some drawings here. Okay, do a transform plate boundary here. For Okay, then draw. It's a pretty simple drawing. Okay, convergent plate boundary. Please make sure that you draw everything here trench volcanic mountains forming okay divergent plate boundary okay a rift valley spreading apart okay so go ahead wait till this mountain here forms here volcanic mountain here and then you can go ahead and pause it all right have a good night and we'll see you next time